Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.11 and Eagle Dynamics AH64D Apache module. Welcome to tutorial 4, Rockets from the Pilot Seat. Uh, the Apache has what it calls the Aerial Rocket Subsystem. This is uh, the ability to carry up to four M261 pods on the wing pylons, uh, and these pods are articulated for calculated range. Uh, so they can automatically tilt up and down. Uh, all you have to do is point the helicopter in the correct direction and fire. So we're going to go over the usage of these pods in the Apache today from the pilot seat. Uh, now it is possible to fire rockets from the CPG seat. That would very rarely be done. Um, mainly they'd be fired from the pilot seat, uh, but they can also be fired in a cooperative mode where the, the CPG provides uh, aiming and range information to the pilot. Today we're going to do standalone mode from the pilot seat. Uh, and we're also going to use the uh, helmet mounted display. It's also possible to use the FCR or the TADS as a, uh, a target and ranging source as well. But today we're going to cover the most basic employment of this weapon. So first things first, let's take a little look at the weapon format page here. Uh, we can see that we have rocket pods on the outer pylons here only. And if I select rockets, the, those become illuminated. Uh, we have 38 rockets in total. If we had multiple rocket types, they would appear down the left hand side here and I could choose which type I was going to fire. Uh, each pod can be loaded with a variety of warhead types in different zones. These zones are labelled A, B, C, D and E. Uh, today I only have high explosive loaded, however. Uh, on the right hand side we can choose the quantity that we want to release with each pull of the trigger. Note that the trigger needs to remain pulled for the entire length of the salvo, otherwise you'll leave some of the rockets in the pod. Today I'm going to leave it on one, we'll fire singles for this uh, on, on this particular occasion. If we're going to make use of manual ranging we can set it here, just like we did with the gun. Um, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. And if I go to the utility page, and choose load, I can actually see what the system thinks is in each zone. Now changing this doesn't actually change what's on the aircraft, it just changes what the, the software expects to see. If I come out of util, come out of rocket, we'll leave this page as default. Um, so yeah, sighting, uh, as before, uh, we can change the site using the, the site selection switch, and uh, the acquisition source can also be changed as well. Right now we're on helmet mounted display and fixed. And if I actually bring up the, the IHADs here, that's then confirmed here. Pilot's helmet mounted display is my, my sight. Uh, currently I have a, a, a manual range set of 1,500 meters and my acquisition source is fixed. We're, we're going to leave it as fixed for just now, uh, although I will demonstrate something else a little bit later. Uh, note that your acquisition source is always this dashed cross. Um, we're going to demonstrate putting that somewhere else a little bit later, but for now we're going to leave it fixed to the front. This is my line of sight cross. We're going to reference this with the rocket steering cursor when we select rockets uh, and that's how we'll actually fire them. In fact, if I was to the left right now, I've wazzed rockets. You'll see that on the bottom right we get rockets normal. Uh, in the normal mode, the pylons will articulate automatically for the given range. And if I move my um, line of sight cross and put it in line with the I-beam or the, uh, the rocket steering cursor, when these two intersect, if I pull the trigger, that's where the rockets will hit if the range is correct. Very, very important thing to say is that we need a range source that coincides with that location. So if I happen to know what the range is, I can enter that. Uh, and pulling the trigger would cause that uh, rocket impact to be fairly accurate. Let's go master arm on. That's then confirmed on the weapons page. And first, let's try a manual range. So let's go manual range. I'm going to enter 500 meters. Boom. That's then confirmed on the IHADs. You'll see that my ranging source is now manual and 0.5 of a kilometer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put uh, my line of sight cross on the I-beam. That should give me fairly accurate um, hits, again, as long as it's 500 meters. Note that if I look too far up, I get pylon limit and I get limits at the bottom right and the I-beam becomes dashed. There are various circumstances under which we will hit different limits for the pylon. 
So let's, uh, we're in active pause, so this is a bit of an artificial situation. Let's pull the trigger now. And you'll see that, actually, fairly accurate, that's pretty much where it landed. Of course, I wasn't looking at exactly 500 meters. If I was to bring my head down just a little bit here and pull the trigger again. Yes, that's, that's giving us a, a 500 meter hit with the pylons automatically uh, angling to get me a hit there. Uh, also note that we get a time of flight <laughs> for the rocket at the bottom right, so it's telling us time of flight's about one second before we get impact. So that's great, that all works. If you know, if you want to manually range, you can do that. Of course, it'd be even better to get laser ranging or similar from the CPG, but today we're not going to employ the help of the CPG. Okay, let's do something slightly more realistic. Um, I'm going to go root direct to and I'm actually going to move the cursor over waypoint 7. Let's fly to waypoint 7, and if I come out of route, let's have a cursor acquisition source, and let's choose waypoint 8 as our acquisition source. This is really handy. It's often going to be the case that you're going to have targets, uh, if it's a kind of pre-planned attack, you're going to have targets at a waypoint you've already selected. So if I, I zoom back out here again, you're going to see, again, my, my sensor is pilot's helmet mounted display. I now have a navigational based range of 15.8 kilometers, uh, and my acquisition source is waypoint 8. You'll notice now that the, the, um, the kind of helmet queuing symbol, it stays in front of the aircraft. My line of sight is always where I'm looking. Uh, I've now got the dashed cross for acquisition source all the way over here at waypoint 8, and it confirms at the bottom right that it's waypoint 8. Let's fly over there. Once I'm in range, uh, I'll show you what this looks like using navigational ranging. Also, notice that we have ballistic limit. The system is basically telling us we're, we're out of range. There's no way we can get a, a rocket to fly 15.8 kilometers. The absolute maximum range is about 7.5 in best circumstances. But let me cut here and I'll bring you back when I'm in range of that target. Okay, so you rejoin me. I'm now a little bit closer to that acquisition source uh, and you can see that we no longer have a ballistic limit, we now have pylon limit. And this is, this is the system basically telling me that I don't have everything lined up correctly. Um, so if I go ahead and I move my, uh, my line of sight here, I wanna, I wanna get this to coincide with the beam. So let's, uh, it's basically telling me I need to look down a bit. Let's do that. And if we maneuver to actually get the line of sight cross and the eye beam to coincide uh, with the acquisition cross, a bit like that, that would be a hit if it wasn't for the fact that we're outside of pylon limit. So actually I need to be a bit closer to actually be able to make this hit. There we go. We now have rockets normal. So if I get all of these to coincide, I'm showing about four kilometers range here. This is going to be fairly inaccurate, but let's pull the trigger. Time of flight about 10 seconds, it's telling me. Let's see what we get here. Keep in mind that the rockets are very much an area effect weapon. Okay, yeah, it landed a little bit short, but that wasn't terrible. Let's get these all to line up again and pull the trigger. That was another long range rocket shot there. And yet again, I kind of fell short. Let's try that again. Let's uh, let fly a few of these. Of course, you would tend to fire these in something of a salvo. Um, and you would probably do it a little bit closer than this. I'm doing some very long-range shots here. But uh, with everything lined up, you should get something approximating a hit. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. That's within, within the area that I'm trying to hit. Yes, there we go. Yeah, th th those are hits at that waypoint. Now that I'm closer, I'm finding it much easier to actually make those hits. So there you go. That's how you would do that. That's using a navigational ranging source. Again, as I said before, you'd probably be better off with uh, a TADS acquisition source with laser ranging. Uh, you can also do this with the FCR, uh, but there, that's all easier done uh, with the help of the, uh, the CPG. Let's now have a little look at uh, fixing the pods. So one moment, let's uh, go down to the uh, the weapons format page here again, and uh, let's go to utility, and let's go ahead and ground stow the pods. So with that done, what we're gonna get, if I bring my hi hi hads back up again, uh, you'll see that we now have an I-beam that has a gap in the middle, uh, and we see rocket 
ground stool. Uh, so what's going to happen now is the pods will no longer, uh, the I beam will no longer move up and down basically in relation to the the LOS. Uh, the pods are now in a completely fixed location. So I just need to line up my LOS with the middle of the I beam. And then, for a fixed range that I have set, uh, I should make hits. This is this is way more like strafing with the gun when you have the gun in fixed mode. Uh, I'm now going to switch to a manual range of 500 again, and you'll see that's confirmed in my iHads. I'm going to get these symbols to oops to line up. There we go. And if I was to pull the trigger here, it should, yeah, basically hit on target. So if, if I was doing a strafing rockets attack. Uh, that should get me a good hit. Let's uh, let's bump this quantity up to four here. We'll do a little salvo, get all of our symbols to line up again. Um, that's it. So LOS, cross, and I-beam lined up. Pull the trigger, and for the given range, which was approximately correct, I will make hits. Uh, I, I, of course, want my LOS uh, cross to be approximately at the correct range as well. You now see I've got the indication no rockets. We've actually expended all of the rockets. So those are the most basic ways of employing the M261 rocket pods in the Apache from the pilot seat using the HMD and using either manual ranging or uh, navigational point based ranging. Now I, I used waypoints here but in actual fact you could use anything at all. Uh, if I went into uh, coordinates, you know, if I had um, if I had uh, target points and things like that, I could select them in here and use those as a navigational source as well. So just be be aware of that. You can use basically anything that can end up in the acquisition source uh, can be uh, a navigational uh, range source. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.